Hello guys, welcome back to the Debug Arena. In this video, I am going to teach you the basics of React Native. Like, when we create a new React app, you will see that there are many automatically generated folders. So, I am going to walk through all the folders and I will tell you when and where you can edit them. After that, we will see what are component in React Native and we will render our first component. Once done with all of this, we are going to use some of the predefined components provided by React Native like view, image, text and buttons so that you can edit them and show some text and buttons in our React application by doing the actual code. Also at each point, I am going to compare the code of the React Native with HTML or React.js so that if you are familiar with web development, you can catch the code very quickly. And one more thing, I hope you haven't forgotten our end goal. Our end goal is to make this application. If you haven't seen the demo of the application, you can go and watch the first video of the playlist. In that, I have shown the functionalities we are going to implement in this React Native application. And by working on that functionalities, we are going to learn React Native, MongoDB and Node.js from scratch. So, without any delay, let's get started. Okay, so the first tip towards the learning of any new language is that you should go through the documentation or you should keep it open. So first, let me go to Chrome and here we can search for React Native documentation. Click on the first link and just keep this open. Now, the next step is to create a new app. So, I can find the command inside this environment setup. I will just scroll down. I am going to use React Native CLI. And here you can see this is the command to create a new app. So, I will copy this. I will go to my CMD. I will paste that command here. Instead of awesome project, we will pass our project name. It will be friends. I will hit enter. Let's wait for it to create a new project. Okay, it is done. Now, I will navigate to that folder. From here, I will start my React Native application. For that, we can run React Native Run Android. Till it is starting our application, we can go through the file structure. Okay, so these are the folders which have been generated automatically. All of them are not that much important, so we will go through the important ones. So this is package.json. Inside this, you can see all the important application data are mentioned here, like name, version of the application, what command it will take to run on Android, what command it will take to run on iOS. And when you scroll down, you can see all the dependencies or packages which have been installed in our React Native application. So if you want to integrate a functionality, for that you might have to install a package from the web. So when you install a package from a web, it should be listed here. Otherwise, you will not be able to use that package in our React Native application. So the package.json have the list of all the packages that are installed in the React Native application. After that, we will go to this matter.config.js. We are not going to touch this because it is responsible for the running of the matter server or you can see this node.js server. So, we are not going to touch this. After this, we will go to index.js file. So, let me tell you, this is the most important file because this is the starting point of our application. Whatever component we will mention in this will be shown in our application when it gets loaded. So, here you can see this is the component which have been imported from React Native. After this, we have imported this app from this app.tsx and here we are registering this component like whenever our app will load, this component will be shown. So, index.js is responsible for the render of the application. After that, we will go to app.tsx. I will take this at the last. Here you can see there is this node modules inside this whatever packages you are installing will be mentioned here or listed here. And here you can see there is two folder Android and iOS. As you know, React Native is a framework and it helps us to create an application that can run on both Android and iOS. Android and iOS have different kind of configuration. So from these folders, we can change the configuration of Android and configuration of iOS. Now let's go to app.tsx file. So first, let me show you the output of this file. You can see it is rendering this. This is the by default layout provided by React Native. So the first thing I will do is to delete this app.tsx because this is TypeScript. TypeScript might be difficult for the beginners to catch up. So we will code on JSX. JSX stands for JavaScript XML. So I will first delete this. When we delete this, our application will break. It is because inside index.js, we are rendering this app component and it haven't been exported. So it will break. So first, let's create our app.jsx file. Still, it will break because we have created app.jsx but we haven't exported any component. So, the first question is how we can do that. In JavaScript, if we want to perform any action, the first thing we do is create a function. Let me create a function. Name as app. 
we can create a function like this. Now in web, in JavaScript function, we usually do console or write any logic of add, subtract or anything. Here also we can do that, but here we have to render a UI component. We can do that inside this return. So I will write return here, hit enter. But unlike HTML or ReactJS, we cannot write directly anything here and hit save and it will work. No, it doesn't work like that. So for that, we have to import a component from React Native. So I will come here, I will try to import. We can import any component like this. We will give curly brackets. I will write here from and I can write here React Native. And we are going to import a component name as text. Now I will hit save. Here I will write, and inside this text I will write high body. Also I will style them to look it bigger. We can style it same as HTML or ReactJS, but we have to use this curly bracket. And here I can write font size. You can notice that here we have to write styling like this, like the camel case. We cannot put hyphen here. And I will give S30. And I will hit save. And you can see nothing is happening. Why it is? It is because we have created a function. Inside a file, we can create a n number of function. But which function our app will show, that will decide the function which we will export. So we have to export this. And once we export and hit save, you can see our application is loading. And you can see we are getting this high body. So we have rendered our first component. Okay, you can see I've called this text as a component. Inside index.js, I've called this app as a component. So what is component? Component is nothing, just a piece of code that is written separately and can be used anywhere and any number of time. Let me give you an example. So let's take the example of this home screen. Here you can treat this home screen as this app component. So first, let me note down all of the things visible here. Okay, so these are the things which are visible on a home screen or you can say in our app component. But do you think all of them are written inside the same file? The answer is no. Like you can see, all the elements at the top, we can call them as a notification bar elements. So what we can do, I will create a new folder named as notification bar. Inside that, I will put all these elements. Then I will export that notification bar. And then inside the app, I will just call here notification bar. And what it will do, it will call all that element inside this notification bar. This is known as component. Like you are writing a piece of code for each block and using them in your parent element. By the use of component, you can make your code look clean. Okay, I hope you have understand the concept of component. Now let me delete this. Okay, before moving to the next component, do you know that this return will only return one element or one component? That is, currently I am returning this text. So it is working fine. What if I return another text? So I will copy this, paste it here and hit save. And you can see I am getting the error. Adjacent JSX element must be wrapped in an enclosing tag. This means that return should have only one element and other element should be inside that. So in that case, to solve this error, we can wrap our element inside this empty tag. You can see like this. And when I hit save, our error will be gone and it is working fine. But this is not the efficient way. Like here, I cannot style this. So in that case, we can use another component provided by React Native that is view. View act as a container in React Native, same as div in HTML. So I will write here view. When I click here, it will already get imported. I will write here view and hit save. Nothing will happen, but this has created a container. So inside one view, you can have another view in which you can place some amount of element like this. Then you can have another view for other elements like this. So view act as a container and also it helps us to differentiate between the different elements of our screen. We can also style them. So I will write here style and inside this I will give padding as 30 pixel. Here we don't write 30 pixel, we write only 30 and when I hit save you can see high body has been moved to left, right, top and bottom. So this is all about view. So here you can see I have provided this style inside the view component. This is known as props. Props are kind of attribute which are provided to the component to make them functionally better. So how do you know what are different type of props our component is accepting? So for that we have to go to documentation. 
you can come to this website then click on development and here you can click on components here you will find all the list of components provided by react native you can go through all of them to know them better now we will go to view so first here you will get an example how you can use that component what are the different styling or props you can give and when you scroll down here you will get the list of all the props we can use inside our component all of them are not that much important but you can go through them and they are important at some point of time also here you can see this ios mark which means that this prop is only available for ios so this was it for view now let's use another component no yes button so i will find button here and you can see here it is i will click here and i will just copy this button here in, I will create a new view and inside that view I will copy that button and for now I am removing this style padding equal to 30 it is not looking good also for now I will remove this accessibility label and this on press ok we are done I will hit save and you can see I am getting the error property button doesn't exist it is because I haven't imported it so we have to import now I will hit save and you can see it is looking good ok so our button is visible here you can notice that we cannot write button like this if we write like this and hit save you can see I am getting the error the title prop of button must be a string so this means that all the component should be written in the specific format and you can find that format inside the documentation now I will remove this inside button you can notice currently there are two props title and color there is one shortcut to find the prop you can press enter then I will press here control backspace and you can see all the props we can write here now I am going to write this on press inside on press we can also write this function like this this is known as arrow function and here I will write log hi and I will just hit save ok I have to remove this I will hit save and when I click on learn more nothing is happening let's see the console and here I am getting this hi so in this way you can go to the documentation try to see different type of component and what are the props they are offering now let's move to the styling part here you can see I am writing the styling like this this is known as inline styling and this is not the recommended one so what we can do we can write our style here at the bottom or in some other external file so I will try to show both so I will come here create a variable name as styles inside this I am going to use another component name as style sheet so I will click here and it will already get imported from here I will use a function name as create inside create we can write like this you can see the syntax now here I will pass the class name so the, my class name will be text style here we have to write like this and after this curly braces so in this way you define a class inside the style sheet or you can say react native here I will pass font size as 30 here also we don't try 30 pixels after that I can give you a color as red make sure to write inside the string otherwise it will give error and I will hit save now I will write here another component for that also we have to give you a comma and I will write the another class name as view style you can give the name by your own here I will write background color in the camel case and it will be black so let me make it white now I will hit save and nothing will happen it is because we have to call this so I will come inside this styling previously we were writing two curly braces now I will write only one inside this I will call this styles and I will pass here text style here also same and inside this parent view I am going to call a style I will write only one curly braces I will call my variable name is styles I will give dot and I will call this views and when I hit save you can see our styling has been applied so in this way you can style the component in react native now let me show you how you can write the styles in the external file so I will come here I will create a new file name as style.js inside this I will copy that so here the first thing is to import this style sheet otherwise it will throw us error so I will come here I will write import curly braces inside this I will write style sheet and it will automatically import and I will come here and hit save and you can see our styling has been gone and here you can see I am getting the error style property styles doesn't exist it is because we have written here styles but where it is like we haven't defined it so for that we have to import these styles from the another file so I will come here 
before importing we have to export it from here so i will export default styles i will hit save come here and now here i will try to import styles from style and i will hit save so you can see it is working fine in this way you can style your component from the external file that's it for the video i hope you understand the basics of react native like how react native work what is index.js what are the other files what is component how you can create a component how you can use the previously defined component how you can pass props to the component and how you can see what are different type of component and props in documentation now in the next video we will see more components and also we will deep dive into the props of the component so for that hit the subscribe button share this video with your friends and wait for next video thank you